My brothers, my sisters, when Allah closes a door for you and a second door and a third door and a fourth door, it is because the fifth door will lead you to a place way beyond the first four doors. You have to be convinced. But if you stop, that's where everything stops. You gave up, that's where your hope stops. A reaction of giving up hope is not part of the dictionary of a mu'min. A believer does not give up hope. Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is sufficient for me, for us. And He is the best disposer of our affairs. As a result of that conviction that they had and the dua that they made, Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. We actually converted for them whatever there was in terms of fear that they may have been or may have been warned about into a beautiful coolness, a calmness, success and victory. First, admit to your fault in front of the Mighty One. The Mighty One loves you, my friend. The Mighty One loves you. Doesn't He love you? While you sin, He still feeds you. While you sin, He still clothes you. While you sin, he still gives you your daily bread. He gives you water. He gives you food. He gives you salary end of the month. He gives you a nice wife. He gives you children. He's given you hundreds and thousands of gifts that Allah has given. You try and count Allah's gifts. You try and count them. It's impossible, Allah says. You will not be able to count my gifts. And what you sit there complaining about Allah, that Allah gave you this one little musibah, 10 musibah, so what? 10 afflictions, so what? Allah hasn't looked after you. We are, as he said, trampled on. We are in horrible conditions, no matter where we are. In the West, we have a bit, more than a bit of luxury compared to what a lot of the Ummah is going through. And a lot of the questions I keep hearing from Muslims, why is all of this happening to us? Muslims are very good at pinpointing scenarios and becoming tunnel visioned into looking at only what's happening in the here and now. Not being able to take a step back for a moment and look at the big picture. This was something the Prophet ﷺ was, was able to do. He was able to step back and look at the bigger picture. Sometimes based on wahi that came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes based on the own uh, hikmah that Allah had given him and wisdom to see bigger pictures. I want to explain to you a few instances of situations where it seemed as if things were very dark. Things were very unfortunate. They looked like there might be no way out for these individuals I'm going to talk about tonight. But at the end of it all, Allah brought forward the big picture. We know very beautifully, Allah says in the Quran, Makaru wa makarullah, that we plan and Allah plans. Our plans are always going to have some flaws to them. Why? Because we're human beings. We're flawed. Our innate nature is that we're, we're flawed. We're going to make mistakes even in our planning. And then Allah says, and He plans. And Allah is the best of those who plan. So sometimes we have to understand that we can make the best of plans. As a human being, I can make the best plans for my future, for my children's future, for my family's future. We as an ummah can come together and make the best plans to move forward, even if we found some way to find unity. But at the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a plan. And that plan is perfect because it comes from He who is perfect. And sometimes that plan doesn't even make sense to us. Sometimes our plan is not right. And so Allah interjects His plan into the scheme of things. And we can't understand it. Sometimes it looks as if things are going a mess. I'm trying my best, but it's not working. Oh, it's working. You just don't see it. It might be that your plan wasn't going to lead you to where you want it to be. So Allah is rerouting the, 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 the sat nav of your life. He's rerouting you. You are about to head into a lot of traffic. And Allah is sending you another way. During the life of the Prophet ﷺ, when things became too hard in Mecca, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed him to make hijrah. And he left with his best friend in this life, his Khalil Abu Bakr. They sent people to chase them down. And there was one man in particular whom they hired who was the best of those who did that, trackers. His name was Suraqa ibn Malik. And with the best of those trackers, he could track anything. So he said, I'll find him. No problem, I'll find him. So the Prophet والسلام, and Abu Bakr were on their way and they heard the horse hooves of Suraqa ibn Malik chasing them. 
So they retired to a small cave up on the hillside in Mecca. They hid in a cave that was only really big enough for two people and it really didn't conceal much. If you did a little bit of investigation, you'll find the people in that cave. But this was, was it, this is all they had. And as Suraq was coming, the Prophet والسلام, made dua to Allah and Suraqa's horse fell into the sand, sunk into the sand and got stuck. And Suraqa realized what's happening. So he called out to Muhammad, Oh Muhammad, make dua to Allah to release my horse and I won't follow you anymore. I'll, 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 I'll give up my chase. So the Prophet released his horse and Suraqa broke his word and started coming at them again. So he made dua, sunk in the sand again. This happened a couple of times. And finally Suraqa said, look, just, just make dua that Allah gets me out of this. I'll leave and I'll also misguide anyone who comes along this way. Now the Prophet ﷺ called out to Suraqa and said something that caused Suraqa to think that this man's lost his mind. This man's out of control. He said, Oh Suraqa, how are you going to be on the day when the bracelets of Kisra are presented to you as a booty from the believers, from the Muslims? And Suraqa's shaking, his, he's rubbing his head, he's thinking, what did he just say? This guy is by himself, hiding in a cave, everybody's looking for him, he has no support, he has nothing, and he's sitting here telling me that I'm going to be given the bracelets of one of the greatest kings on the earth right now, the greatest empires that the world has known. This man must be out of his mind. But then the rest of the Meccans came and they started to approach the cave where the Prophet is. And as they got close, Abu Bakr became frightened. Because it looks like this plan is not working. They're going to see us. Even if they look down at their feet, they're going to see us. And the Prophet والسلام, asked Abu Bakr, he said, Oh Abu Bakr, radiallahu an, what do you think of two people whom the third of them is Allah? And then he said something to him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguards for us in his book. He said to him, La tahzan, inna Allah ma'ana. Do not worry. Don't worry. Don't be afraid. Have no concern. For Allah is with us. And of course we know the story that the Meccans didn't see them. And they were able to continue the hijrah and build an empire that would indeed surround the world. Later on, after the Prophet's death, before the Prophet's death, Suraqa would become a Muslim. He would enter into Islam. Then Abu Bakr's Khalafa came. It was struggle. They were fighting different uh, elements within the Ummah. The people who uh, apostated from Islam, the people who refused to pay zakah. A lot of things happened. Then the Khilaf of Umar came and Umar was able to conquer the Persian Empire. And the bounty came into the Khilafah. And as Umar was going through it and distributing it, a box was brought to him and he opened it up. And in it was the bracelets of Qisra. So immediately, he said, bring for me Suraqa. And Suraqa came and Umar presented to him the bracelets of Qisra saying that this is the fulfillment of the promise of Rasul to you. And Suraqa began to cry. You see, Suraqa couldn't understand what the Prophet ﷺ was talking about. Abu Bakr couldn't even really see what was really happening. But the plan of Allah was in full motion. Sometimes we can't see it. Sometimes it, it, it doesn't seem like it's working. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a plan. Sometimes it seems as if Everything's against us. Sometimes we may even question the plan of Allah. Like, Ya Allah, what, why me? What are you doing to me? What, what have I done to deserve this? What has this Ummah done to deserve the travesty and the tragedy that is going through right now? This is what we ask many times. And I know we've all become susceptible to it at some point in life. You see, that's, that's how life is sometimes. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a plan. You see, sometimes we have to look at the big picture. That this ummah is suffering, it's suffering, absolutely it's suffering. And we, we, we like to feel sorry for those who are suffering. We like to look at them in, in, with compassion the way that we should, but sometimes we forget that the real people who might be suffering, the real people who might be being tested the most, are the ones who are going home tonight to sit on our luxurious couches with a refrigerator 10 feet away where we can go get anything we want to eat and turn on our big flat screen TVs and lay tonight in our nice, warm, comfortable beds. Maybe we're the one being tested the most. 
Maybe it is Allah loves those people of Palestine so much for all that they have struggled for to keep the house of Allah and the purity of the, one of the most holy places on this earth. Maybe Allah loves them so much that He's putting them through all this hardship to only grant them the highest and highest and highest ranks of Jannah in the next. While we are sitting home on our luxurious couches, maybe dying in the middle of our sleep to only be tormented in the grave and tested on the day when we meet Allah. So who's really winning here? Our thought process, the way that we process information is completely different than the way the companions processed information. The Prophet ﷺ saw things big. Now we cannot see past what's right in front of us in laps of luxury. Even if you make minimum wage compared to those people, you are living in luxury. From seeing the stories of people who can't even feed their children and that's why they're leaving. Because their children are crying at night hungry and there's nothing to feed them. We have to question ourselves now. Umar ibn al-Khattab said, become your own hasib, your own accountant. In this life, before the next life when the account is going to be taken from you. We have to learn to reprogram the way that we think. We cannot change the world. I don't care how much money we were able to amass. We can't change the world. I don't care how strong our fortresses and, and military became. We couldn't change the world with it. Unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed it to be so. It's impossible. I don't care how many protests you have. I don't care how many petitions you sign. I don't care what big group you gather. If Allah Azza wa Jal has not placed it within His plan for you to be successful, you will fail again and again and again and again and again. So if this ummah is humiliated right now, it's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has willed it to be so and it's for a reason. This is what we keep stop thinking. We keep saying the ummah is humiliated. But I, and, and when I hear that, I keep thinking, what's the reason? This ummah doesn't have unity. What's the reason? This ummah doesn't have strength. What's the reason? We've got to get to the core of the problem. And the majority of it is because of what goes on right up here in the mind of every single Muslim. We've forgotten where to put our priorities. I'm going to give you one last verse that you all know. In it is the plan for success. For whatever you want to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا يَتَقِ اللَّهِ Whosoever fears Allah, يَجْعَلُهُ مَخْرَاجًا Allah will make for them a way. You see, you don't have to worry about the way. You see, this is what Muslims get so caught up in, the plan, the way, what are we going to do? No, no, Allah says, don't worry about the way. You fear me and I will make the way. I'll show you the way when there is no way. I'll open a door when there wasn't a door there. I will create means for you. You put a little effort, Allah can change the very physics of the universe on your behalf. But we, we keep thinking that we can do it. We can, no, we can't do anything. There is no power. There is no ability except but by that which Allah gives you. You don't stand unless Allah allows you to stand. You don't breathe unless Allah allows you to breathe. You don't walk unless Allah gives you the capability to walk. And at any moment, He can take it all from you. This is what we have to learn as Muslims. That our success, our failures, our makes, our breaks, everything is reliant on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decision in our life. Everything. There is nothing we can do about it except work within the parameters to do the best that we can for Allah. That's it. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيُرْزُقَهُمْ And I will provide, give you risk from places you didn't even imagine it could come. Allah says, I will open doors of risk for you that you couldn't even comprehend that they could exist. Like a small band of backwards desert dwelling Arabs conquering the two greatest nations in the world within a generation. Unheard of. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يَتَوَقَّلُ Allah," And whosoever placed their trust on Allah, فَهُوَ حَسْبُ then he becomes sufficient for them. He becomes enough for them. When the battle of the trench took place during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, over 10,000 bands and bands had surrounded Mecca. They built a trench off of the advice of Salman al-Farsi, something he had seen done in Persian warfare. So they dug this trench. When they dug this trench, the hypocrites of Medina were thinking to themselves, oh my goodness, this is not enough. So they ran into the Muslims and told them, don't you know that a great army is gathered against you out there and you've dug this little trench and you think it's going to be okay? 
This is all you've got. This is your grand scheme and plan. We're done. In order to make them fear and give up. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it only made their iman increase. And they looked at those hypocrites and they said, Husban Allah wa nima akil. Allah is sufficient for us. Yes, we know that trench is not enough. Don't you think we know that? But Allah is sufficient. Allah is enough. And He is the best of those who can protect us. And when they woke up in the morning, they found no one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had implemented His plan, bringing His army in. You see, Allah's army isn't always dressed in fatigues and battle gear and weaponry. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has things that you don't understand that work for Him. The, the creation works for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He sent in His army and routed them. And Allah became sufficient for them. But what caused that action to happen? What caused that plan from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be into motion was their taqwa. Was their reliance and trust in Allah that Allah is enough and we know Allah is enough. And we have no doubt about that plan. We, we might not even have enough money. We might not even have enough knowledge. We might not have enough piety. But Allah is enough for us. If we can do our best to seek the pleasure of Allah in everything that we do, then I have no doubt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will move mountains on our behalf. Because Allah says, Qad aflaha al-mu'minun That these believers are successful. That's a guarantee from Allah. We need to wake up. We need to stop living like we are the most humiliated people on the earth. We need to stop believing that. We need to stop giving in to that. That you should be ashamed of who you are. That you should be afraid of who you are. That you should be hiding who you are. That you should feel downtrodden. That you should have that frown on your face every day. That you should be worried about them knocking on your door every day. Stop believing that hype. Because at the end of the day, we know that I, I believe. Therefore, whatever happens to me is part of Allah's beautiful, wise plan. And the only thing I'm going to do is trust in Him who planned it and try to worship, worship Him to the best of my abilities and do good when the opportunity presents itself and try to stay away from evil when that opportunity presents itself. That's all you need to do. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can take care of the rest.